Hello, everyone. I got to sure to unmute the mic. So thank you, Steve. Um, hi, everyone. I'm pleased to be there with IoTurup today to give you a bit of overview of our STM32 wireless product and uh, how we're working together with uh, IoTurup, uh, myself, and Solosu. So my name is Hakim Jafar. I'm the STM32 wireless and Zero marketing director. So let's, uh, let me share my screen. Please let me know when the screen is correctly shared on the side. Yeah, you're up. Yeah. Let's go. So one word about the quick agenda that we'll see today. So one word, there will be one word about the partner program, uh, one word about the global STM32 portfolio, and then we go deeper into wireless product, and then again, deeper with the cellular solutions and the related ecosystem, and then our partner IOTROP will take the lead for the second part of uh, this webinar. About the partner program. So you have to know that SEM32 and the SEM32 wireless uh, product are uh, teaming up with uh, some partners, in fact, to offer you uh, the best solution about software, hardware, could be training as well. The way, uh, in fact, we are selecting our partner is uh, very uh, important. Uh, we select a partner because they offer a reduced design cycle time solution, a turnkey solution. They enable a customer specific design or end to end solution. And also because we want to have a close collaboration, in fact, with our partners. And for instance, this is why we selected IoT Rock for their uh, solution, the quality, the obviousness of the solution. And of course, with our partners, we are, in fact, um, sharing advanced uh, technology. This is just to give you an overview about the IU, uh, uh, ST partner program. Uh, now, one word about the STM32. So it's a 30-bit MCU. You, you know that, guys. What is important to, to keep in mind here is STM32, on top of being an MCU, is going to add more wireless connectivity on the roadmap, more secure devices. Uh, you know, connected or not connected devices, today's security is the key asset. And we are also offering AI solutions. This is the global picture of our existing portfolio. Then it is split over five sections of five series, I would say. MP1, high performance MCU, mainstream MCU, ultra low power, and the wireless one. And today the wireless uh, MCUs are available in two flavors, STM32WL and WB, all them being STM32 part of the entire ecosystem. Let's have a deeper look of what is an STM32WB. It's just one slide to let you know this is a 2.4 GHz product. It supports Thread, Bluetooth 5.2, Zigbee, which is now called CSA, and Chip, which is now called Mother. So I'll give you the slide later on. You can click on all the links and get much more detail on the product. For the WL, it's a long range product. L stands for long range. It's the world's first SOC supporting the LoRa modulation, but not only. It supports as well Sigfox, Wireless MBUs, MyoT, and plenty other. Here again, you'll get full links, in fact, to get a lot of information about those products. Now, one word about the wireless roadmap. As we have seen today, we have 2.4 gig sub -gig. Our vision, our target is to go into cellular with STM32W something. It's a bit of teasing. And to go into ultra wideband with here again, another series. How to do this? Today, okay, obviously we will focus on the cellular, but how to extend quickly this roadmap and to execute. ST last summer has acquired a couple of companies for this. We have acquired Riot Micro, designing chips for LTM and NB-IoT. We have acquired Somos technology for analog front-end and PA. ST has acquired Bispoon company, uh, working and developing ultra wideband solution. And we have acquired Alkwise company developing BLE solution to reinforce and uh, to increase our team in BLE. All those guys today are now part of ST. So ST has acquired the needed company and knowledge, in fact, to sustain our growth and our development. About the existing solution, because we worked with partners prior to go with acquisition, here you can find a lot of STM32 solution existing out there, bundled with Quectel modem, for instance. So you can see it here, you have an STM32 L4 microcontroller board tied with a Quectel uh, daughter board. You can get it in standalone. You have also a quick uh, sequence sorry, board. You have another board here named IoT node with 
plenty of technology here. And the latest one we launched is our, with our partner Murata. We launched a module, that tiny one here, this module contains the cellular, in fact, um, modem, which based on Altair 1250, an STM32L4, and an embedded SIM from ST. So all this included in this all-in-one module, right? I'll send you the slide, you can go into detail. What you have to know is the board looks like this, right? It comes up with a multiple bands antenna. There is a battery case underneath. There is an audio jack to support voice over LT. It's super affordable. It's far below the dollar, $100. And it's ready to use because when you open the box of this board, you get 50 megabyte credit for free with our partner Truefold. So for you guys, in order to make some trials and to test is the best uh, out, of, out of the box experience. And then the board comes with a lot of features. So obviously the module, you have a micro SIM slot. If you want to go with a particular, in fact, uh, MNO on the NO, you have sensors, USB, user buttons. It's a real evaluation board to quickly help you to develop and to play with this, right? Now, to go deeper, we're now going to switch to the Xcube cellular, our ecosystem. And now uh, I give you the, the, the mic, uh, Solofo, your turn. If you want to take the lead, yeah. Solofo, then yeah. yeah. OK, thank you very much, Hakim, for this You're introduction. Welcome. Okay, so I will share my slide. Okay, so uh, my name is Solo Fora Zafinaba. I'm uh, working for the microcontroller division uh, in charge of the uh, vertical application related to the integration of the cellular with the STM32. So for the today uh, agenda, um, I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, ST cellular IT pillars, how we enable the cellular in the ST ecosystem. And uh, I will uh, talk about the uh, product development process, how we make the cellular integration is very easy and to make a device with cellular. And I will talk about our core technology, which is called the XCube cellular. And finally, I do a kind of a short summary of uh, uh, our cellular IT solution and how it, let's say, help uh, our end customer to make a quickly a product, OK? So for the uh, first, the ST cellular IoT pillar. So basically, uh, ST is providing the key components uh, based on the STM32 to drive the cellular. So basically, the idea was to develop a middleware, which is called Xcube Cellular. It is part of the STM32 Cube expansion. So the goal of this middleware is to enable the cellular as simple as, as possible, meaning that we just provide internet connectivity without uh, requiring the end customer or developer to even understand the cellular or to uh, uh, even understand the modem below. So basically it provides all needed to provide internet security for the cellular. So to make it running, we have developed a cellular kit evaluation as uh, presented by Hakim. Uh, so at the left, we have a bundle of uh, a discovery board with STM32 and the modem module, or you can buy the standalone module, or you can use also the discovery board with the all-in-one module coming from Murata. And then in the end, to make the product that the customer can select easily, uh, uh, the solution based on the chipset component, selecting the STM32, the modem, and the SIM card or just to take the all-in-one module from Mirata, as uh, said by Hakim. So the second point is the uh, uh, second pillar is the uh, uh, global coverage. Why? Because, uh, you know, for such IoT device, we, we, we let's say, uh, the, the, the customer can develop uh, one in, uh, in, in one time, the product, but uh, it can be deployed worldwide. So the idea was that Xcube Cellular will support a different technology, CATM, and BIoT, but also uh, fall back to 2G. So uh, and then on top of this, we uh, support also multiple vendors. Uh, so here we have the list, Quectel, Sequence, and uh, Mirata using the uh, modem from Sony. So it allows the customer, let's say, to uh, evaluate quickly the solution with the selected modem, but uh, even later they can switch from one modem to another by keeping their own application and changed because the Xcube cellular abstract that the modem actually. 
And then uh, beyond the uh, modem, we uh, the kit we have uh, is support a multi sim and the multi MC and the embedded sim to provide a maxi maximum flexibility for the connectivity. And to have um, uh, out of the box connectivity, uh, we work with uh, Trufen uh, for, um, uh, let's say, for their uh, large coverage for the LTE uh, uh, low power uh, cellular network. So now we have the internet connection, we have the components. So what is missing in the cloud? So basically, we work with partner, especially uh, with um, uh, uh, companies such as uh, IoTerop. So for the lightweight machine to machine to provide the lightweight machine to machine client and the device, because as you know, this technology is the most optimized for this kind of low power device. And then for sure, we support as well the MQGT. So basically we support, you know, the uh, uh, Azure, AWS, uh, Amazon Free Arthos, but we work as well, as well with um, uh, another live object uh, such as uh, uh, Orange Live Object. So basically we provide a complete solution with our partner. So now I'm going to talk about uh, typical product development process. So basically uh, what the end customer needs to do is to, to select the hardware development kit. So I give here the example of the only one module with uh, uh, Murata. Uh, then uh, with this, uh, the goal is to make a quick evaluation and to develop a prototype using the onboard peripherals. So for that, uh, the customer just need to download the Xtube cellular middleware from the sc.com and they use the SM32 cube tools and the ecosystem to compile and to generate the binary and uh, to program the uh, uh, image to the modem in an easy way. Then when everything is, uh, let's say, uh, running properly, uh, meaning uh, uh, the internet connection is working with the uh, selected uh, uh, operator. So here with Trufon, when everything is uh, working fine, uh, then the customer just needs to integrate the uh, cloud on top of Xcube Cellular. So the customer can use uh, SM32 cube expansion from partners uh, and using additional software components as well. So. Basically, the idea was that when it is fully operational, running with the cloud, with the sensors, then the customer can start to do it, build in the actual hardware. So for that, uh, okay, they have to select the component and uh, for the device, but we provide also a bunch of documentation, schematic, and the user manual to help the customer to design the final hardware. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the core technology, which is uh, called Xcube Cellular. So basically, uh, it's run in the microcontroller, and it will uh, it can be seen as a kind of abstraction layer of the modem. So as you can see here, uh, we have the modem here, and as I said, we support a multi sim. So we introduce a multiplexer here in order to enable different sim interface here. So for we uh, you can have the um, the ST4 SIM memory SIM, you can have the uh, standard uh, socket interface, but we can even support, you know, the SIM uh, hosted by the STM32 if uh, it is needed. So basically, uh, uh, we, natively we support a multi SIM interface. So we have defined this ST mode interface um, to abstract actually the hardware. And then Xtube Cellular will manage the ST mode uh, signals to control the communication with the modem and to control the old GPIU. So uh, the Xtube Cellular middleware, a uh, uh, kind of a short uh, presentation, uh, provide the two uh, simple APIs. One is for the control and the other one is for data. So for the control, we have a very simple functions to initialize, configure, and to start a cellular service. And for the data plan, we provide a PSD socket, which is well known to, you know, to create a socket connection, to uh, send an IP packet, TCP or UDP. So the Xcube cellular will manage AT, all AT command communication with the modem and the exchange the APDU messages uh, with the, uh, the ST4 SIM. Also, as I said, the Xcube cellular is monitoring, uh, you know, the SIM status to support the remote SIM provisioning. 
On top of this, uh, we provide additional library, uh, which allows to uh, uh, leverage the embedded secure element in the ST4C. So it, uh, we support uh, the PKCS11 library, which is a well-known library, uh, well-known interface, I would say, uh, to enable the external uh, secure element. So this library can be easily integrated in any, uh, you know, uh, cryptography uh, library, like embed TLS, SSL. So for that, um, uh, then the, the next step, we just, you know, integrate the application on top of this. So it's to provide all library to make the uh, internet connection uh, uh, supporting, let's say, uh, encrypted communication using this PKCS11 library. Okay. So uh, just as a summary, uh, uh, as you can see in this diagram, uh, ST is providing the low level part here, the Xcube cellular, with the needed component to make the connectivity and the internet connection ready to use. So by, by this, Xcube cellular really simplifies the cellular IT development. And then on top of this, as we provide a really well-known API to connect a cloud application, then it will be easy to integrate the cloud for any modem that has been chosen by the customer. So here, uh, now we come up uh, with uh, our partner here, IoT Rob team, to present their solution as a cloud client. Thanks a lot for listening. So uh, I'll let uh, you, uh, uh, Stephen Hadem, to, uh, to the, the microphone. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, and, and uh, once again, thank you very much, both of you. Um, I have with me here uh, Atam Uzlati, CEO of IOTROP, and, and I'll let him begin by introducing the company. Hello, everybody. So I'm very happy to be here. So thank you, ST, for this great partnership. So we're going to go through uh, what we have developed together, right, and combination of our ST micro or hardware and what the wireless capabilities and including like with end -end clients. So what we provide to, to this ecosystem for uh, more efficiency in building uh, efficient IoT applications. Uh, let me introduce you with some, uh, uh, with, uh, with our company. Okay, so um, Interop is, uh, is a company I created uh, in 2016 uh, from former uh, Intel executives. So, uh, we are we provide really disruptive solution for massive IT deployments that includes really security and device management of uh, large fleets of IT devices. Um, our vision is really to establish uh, powerful tools in order to provide massive IT deployment to our customers. Uh, so we are strongly involved in two uh, standardization bodies that includes uh, OMA, but also Ipsil Alliance, IETF, and IOXT. But that's, that's very important for us. So. Um, IoTrop vision is really centered on standards, right? So IoTrop is very involved into the IoT standardization bodies. We are a board member of the Open Mobile Alliance, uh, so the, which gather all the big telcos that try to define uh, the, the standard for security and device management on a, on a worldwide perspective. So we have a strong influence there. Uh, we are literally you know, driving those lightweight and plan specification on a worldwide perspective. And we contribute to a significant enhancement when it comes to reducing traffic, optimizing the footprint, and making sure uh, we can make this light of end to end evolve towards embracing uh, IoT uh, challenges, especially for constrained devices. So um, as I mentioned, uh, our vision is really centralized around three challenges that all face for industrial customers. So typically security, interoperability, device management. And those three things are intrinsically uh, linked right, together because they are critical consideration when envisioning massive IoT deployments. So let's take security, for example. That's almost the most important challenge to solve in IoT. Uh, well, of course, the IoT use cases are often critical. Here we talk about you know, deploying uh, meters that, that, can, uh, that can manage your water, your electricity, your street lighting, so extremely critical use cases. And usually the IoT devices is the most vulnerable point in the IoT value chain. So it's really critical to secure IoT devices end-to-end -end and be able to update the security, those parameters, uh, throughout all the uh, device lifecycle. And such practices are really now enforced by specific regulations. So we see regulation coming into Europe, but also in US, and that enforce 
to provide end-to-end -end security with ciphering with the management of this security from the lifetime of the devices. Uh, also importantly is uh, interoperability, right? So it's really essential in the IoT from data to device to the cloud, everything needs to be open, reusable. It's key to control your cost, right? You need to capitalize on open standard so that to make this interoperability really happen. And that also prevents any vendor lock-in and make sure that providers can actually interact well together. And device management, that's the last challenge. It's really key. So typically, think about how you're going to onboard, configure your devices, change parameters, inject security keys, or even update your devices with new software without, without sending someone on place, right? Because if you just send someone in place just to change some parameters or the software, it means you, your ROI, your solution ROI may collapse. So it's very important to do those operation securely, but also remotely. Good. Um, so this is Stephen Lurie. I'm the marketing manager here at IHRO. Uh, and it's a really interesting time to be in IoT. Um, it's interesting to work with our customers. And there's kind of a growing awareness of of how rapidly this market is evolving. And so some of the things that are happening is that is seller is, is, is maturing. So MBIOT is now becoming a viable option as well as LTAM. And so as people face this, they're, they're looking for solutions. How can we build uh, solutions for global markets that connect to, that can use these new forms of connectivity and can get up to the cloud? Um, and that's one of the reasons why lightweight M2M -M is increasingly on people's radar and increasingly be considered strategic. And then once they look at that, um, then they, they start to take into these, these issues of time to market, uh, qualitative issues and security and, and OPEX. Um, and so today I was going to start by talking a little bit about some of how our customers are doing this and creating value. Um, first thing I'd like to call out uh, that uh, most of our customers, or many of our customers, I should say, use SD microelectronic solutions. So we're pretty familiar uh, with the hardware. Um, and, and basically, what people are telling us in the market is, is they want more blocks, more standardized blocks, uh, so that they can focus more on the solution. Um, and I call this Legos. But the language is very similar to what uh, Salofa was talking about. These are, you know, modular pieces, and they want, you know, they're looking for abstraction, and then they can do this so that they can prototype very quickly. So let's look at the specific use cases here. Um, so Elvaco is a customer of ours. Uh, they came to us, um, and they're kind of very much a classic customer in the sense that they started by looking at a proprietary approach to doing this. They figured out that lightweight to M, M to M made the most sense. And then from there, after using uh, different implementations, realized that there was a qualitative aspect to the implementations. And so working with us, with the documentation, with the onboarding, literally they were able to um, cut down their time to, to getting something operational to a few hours, moving, working with their code to a few hours, to prototyping in days, to products in months. Um, and that's really meaningful to them. Uh, and now they're at the point where they're coming out with more NBIOT products and they're actually having trouble keeping uh, their, their current product in, in stock. So strategically, Lightweight and uh, make them to build a product, right? And replicate, of course, their device portfolio and, and, and spread their product worldwide, right? It's very, very usable. Um, another uh, customer we talk about is um, uh, that we work with is EDMI. Of course, they use uh, ST uh, microelectronics hardware as well. Uh, EDMI is really interesting. David Rowe uh, heads up their efforts there, and he is long in experience in smart water metering, and also he's used about every different uh, LP1 connectivity out there, even having deployed some networks on his own, and he's very uh, pro NBIoT for this market. It just says, it just makes a lot of sense. You don't have to operate this um, you know, you use whatever's there uh, and it gives them access to global markets. Uh, it's also really interesting that very early on for the smart watering market in, in Australia, they settled on lightweight and dem, and then they did a very thorough market study. Uh, they followed up that market study. They, they identified us as a possible candidate. After working with us, uh, they, they just said, no, this is, this is the way we wanna go. Um, and because the infrastructure that we're using 
um, you know, they wanted to be confident that they were choosing the right strategy. And, and he has just flat out said in a past um, webinar that, that it really just made the most sense to work with us. It's also interesting to look at this market in that it kind of gives insight to how uh, lightweight M2M in, in, in certain industries are developing, and it's also happening regionally. Uh, in the next, I think it's by 2027, uh, they're expecting 10 million smart water meters deployed in Australia. Uh, and they have a real focus on OPEX and CAPEX. And, you know, Australia is the driest continent slash country in the world with habit, inhabited country and continent. So water is very important to them. And then not only that, but the OPEX becomes critically important because they're looking at how can they use, um, you know, these sensors and these, you know, to collect and act upon data to improve their efficiency throughout their water network and beyond just billing and the initial things that they focused on early on. Um, and then a, another thing we're kind of seeing in the marketplace as well is that um, security and firmware updates are a big driver. Uh, that's part of the issues with Australia. And we're seeing that increasingly in the US as well as Europe and, and the UK where there's more and more regulation, more and more focus. Um, and that's some issue with some other uh, networks as well where you, you almost don't have the bandwidth really even to do a firmware update. So the key things driving here, the choice is, is performance. Can you imagine having a lightweight internet implementation that can sustain being in place in a low power device for 15 years, right? Yeah. So uh, that Iowa can meet, right? Uh, so performance is very important because it is cost saving at the end. That's a good point. These smart water meters are battery operated. Um, and so optimization and using the very least amount of energy uh, is just a critical importance. You know, you're, if you could add one year to your deployment lifespan, that's almost like 10% or over 10% of your ROI. Um, oh, let, uh, Atem, talk about the next one. Yeah, so typically we, we are working uh, with Traxens, um, you know, a very innovative company in the logistic and transportation industry. So uh, they have the solutions that you know, tracks uh, containers for freight trains and cargoes. So you can know in real time what the situation of your transported good in terms of vibration shocks, temperature, humidity. You can even know whether someone has, uh, has opened a container in a, unexpectedly. So uh, this is the way uh, those kind of industry are using open standards so that to replicate from a provider to another. You know, the big transporters here needs to comply, needs to be an interoperable uh, uh, solutions on the market. So it's a very good, good example on how this industry leverages on open standards so that to provide interoperability within their, their uh, su uh, subscribers, within their uh, clients, but also uh, making sure their, their providers can follow uh, an open approach. Uh, so tracks and solutions is pretty complex here. As you can see, they, they have multi-connectivity support. So uh, they have the ability to transmit data on the hardboard, on the cellular connection, where, for example, the containers are offloading that data, but also when they are uh, you know, on board for uh, several months within cargo. So here, uh, they, they need to use uh, the satellite connection uh, with a lot of care because it's very costly effort. So only you know expected alerts need to be uh, to be uh, to be thrown through the network. Uh, and in that case, let what to one provide them a dynamic way to manage those transmission policies. So it's very powerful for that, and you can change those policies over the year when the devices are on a cellular connectivity again. And uh, just to to Atem's point, the um, the logistics industry, uh, there's an organization called the Digital Container Shipping Association, which represents approximately 80% of the worldwide freight and, and the container industry. And they're very quickly defining all the standards. And they see this as the key to unlocking efficiency and innovation in their marketplace. Um, and so uh, the, the, the market is really organizing around standards and even the data objects underneath. Um, and so that aligns very well with something like lightweight M to M. Right, another example we work with in the US, uh, we work with ITRON on street lighting, but not, not only, we, talk, we work also on the, on the metering side. Uh, so here, lightweight M2M uh, is a way also to enable an ecosystem, right? So uh, ITRON has a lot of ambitions in the smart city, so they want to put in place an ecosystem of standardized infrastructure uh, from device to cloud, so that to onboard more device makers uh, that will provide services at the end, right? Uh, so lightweight end to end is very important for them. So historically, ITRON was building on preparatory technologies, right? So now they are part of the board of director of the OMA, 
So this is a strategic investment for them to capitalize on aquatant 2 m for their infrastructure and make sure they can control their, their OPEX, but also their, their the construction of the divider capex. Uh, so it's a, it's, very, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice strategy to see how a legacy uh, very big players switch to open standards so that to open more opportunities. It, just to touch on something that Atham said, you know, when you when you look at something like street lighting, which is really a pillar of smart city, then what they want is they want to have a system in place for a, you know a smart city solution where they can manage all the different other objects, connected objects, to do that, and then share the data because because of course the value is in there, and of course they need to do that all securely. They need to be able to distribute keys, um, and and also they need a mechanism for sharing the data. Um, Securely, but also in a way that respects people private respects people's privacy. So uh, and and they want to enable their partners to innovate and come up with new devices and be able to support those devices very quickly. And so that's kind of the point about the ecosystem there. Um, the last example we'll talk about, they're also using ST microelectronics hardware, is is a partner of ours, Sentinum. And uh, it's really interesting because. This is kind of what's happening or the opportunity uh, of this marketplace as we're seeing around MBIOT and lightweight M to M, which is um, these are just, uh, there's a smaller organization and they were able to build this device really quickly. And so they looked at different approaches to doing this and then used Iowa and love the abstraction there uh, and said it really simplified cellular development for them. So this is a small organization that's able to build a global solution. And so that's really important for them. Um, and we think that's gonna bring an interesting dynamic to the market and unlock a lot of innovation, um, which, which you know, will help adoption in the long run. Um, so with that, we're gonna talk a little bit about why IOTRA. Uh, so, you know, our, a big part of what we do, um, you know, what we bring to the table, what we actually provide, it starts with our vision. Um, and so I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the things we've worked on since early on, our, 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 our founders all worked with um, early on with the Open Mobile Alliance on the D DM. Um, and so this was pre uh, uh, lightweight M to M and this was really what unlocked the cell phone market and, and allowed this marketplace to boom. Uh, and this is a big part of what inspired our vision. Before, uh, before that happened, the, the cell phone market was fragmented and it was harder to support this. And this all happened um, even pre-lightweight uh, M2M. And this work, working with them, defining the standards, having worked on different implementations of lightweight M2M and, and worked on our own, which we really defined for the marketplace. Now we've it's kind of brought us together to have a certain level of expertise uh, and relevant real IoT deployment experience. Um, and of course, now we back that with some satisfied customers and, and the documentation. But if we were to provide kind of a graphic of what this vision looks like, this would be a visual representation of the vision. Um, you know, our partner here today, uh, ST Microelectronics, Solifa was talking about modular and abstraction, and that's very much where we're working at getting to. So our vision for IoT is a little bit like plug and play IoT. We think people should be able to support any devices, uh, different forms of connectivity very easily, um, uh, and then be able to tie into different security uh, platforms or backends and support different clouds all very easily. Uh, and the whole point is easy, modular, reusable. Uh, and that's something, you know, what we're seeing also is people, they're like, oh, well, if I build with lightweight M to M on top of your thing, that's very strategic in the sense that I have some abstraction from my hyperscaler as well. Uh, and that's interesting to a certain extent. Um, so this is kind of what we've been working on. And now we're going to dive in a little bit um, into depth of this. Um, so uh, a little bit, uh, if we were to look at this at an architectural level, back to Solofo's slide, we're sitting on the top here. Um, and so what we provide is all the light blue here. And so these are pieces are already built, they're standardized. It, when, when we work with our customers, what we do is we really increase their focus on the black part here. Uh, what's interesting with, with lightweight M2M is lightweight M2M is not only do you have the services like you know firmware and security and managing connectivity with co-op, 
but you also have often the data models already defined both at a device management level, but also an applicative at an applicative level. And that's a little bit different from a lot of device management approaches, which is that there's an application plane as well to help you manage that. Um, but that's kind of the secret sauce, which helps people focus on, on the application, focus on the solution and get these up and going really quickly uh, and have a good level of quality. So basically here we provide Iowa SDK for embedded devices. Uh, so we will go deeper into it to, 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 um, to show you how it works. And we provide Alaska as a device management platform that enables you to actually uh, control all the operation you would expect for managing your device life cycle. Um, yeah, so, you, you know, again, just to compare this to how things were done, uh, we're, we're kind of transitioning in the market from M2M to real IoT. These devices are going to be, you know, cloud connected devices and really focused on sharing data. And if we look back at the origins of our marketplace, it was really M2M and people were doing all this. Uh, if you talk with people like David Rowe or, 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 um, or iTron, they built everything that we see on the left. And that's the hard part. Um, so they had to build all these services each time. And they really don't want to do that. That doesn't really add any value there. And the other thing, what it does is it creates this, this ecosystem of siloed data, siloed solutions, everything siloed, siloed, siloed. And it's really the opposite of where we need to get to to unlock adoption. Um, and so that's what, what we're working on. And of course, now what we've done is we've built more pieces already pre-integrated into ST Microelectronics uh, uh, MCU 32 line. So the idea is to get things going even faster uh, than before. Like I call these Legos. Um, and, you know, and people are starting to figure this out. Gartner um, uh, in 2020 said, you know, OEMs, if they're looking to do cellular development, this is really something they should be considering. Right. So here the key, the key learning is, you know, uh, concentrate on your know-how, your know-how is application, your devices, and then, you know, uh, let us do the plumbing and leverage on expertise and, 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 and library and performance so that, uh, you know, to, to concentrate on, on what you need to do, right? Device management is a complex thing. Firmware updates is a complex thing. But all those things can be standardized and you can really pass on your time to market leveraging on the right implementation expertise. And it, it's kind of the same, it's the same, uh, it's the same thinking that would be behind, for example, choosing a cloud provider. No one, no one builds their own cloud. Um, the same thing with a web server, you download Apache and then you just build on top of Apache. So it's kind of the same logic. There's these the building blocks and you just use the right building block. Uh, let's go a little bit better in, in, in what is Iowa, right? SDK. Um, so Iowa is really the most complete and performant lightweight implement implementation in the industry. It's extremely compact. It can run on any platform, even the, the lowest, the low power one. So that's the reason why we choose uh, ST Micro as a reference platform here in Chernobyl, uh, because I mean you can you can really uh, use a low power and and sustainable approach for customers leveraging on, on a very high quality hardware and tools. Uh, so it's very very compact. As you can see, the footprint is the most competitive in the market. It has a very low RAM consumption, uh, and it's it can literally be ported in any hardware platform. Uh, either you know. 30-bit, even 8-bit microcontrollers. It's portable on any operating system. So you can make it run on embed OS or free after OS on anything. Uh, so we have a lot of port available. It's very well documented, right? And its API is very easy to use. So you don't need to have any understanding of lightweight end to or co-op standards, or even uh, know about DTLS security to get started. The APIs are done in a way that you know, in a couple of hours, you have all your logic done and you can ship your product. So uh, that's really very important to leverage on scan of kind of software and expertise to go fast and to building your product. Um, yeah, and it, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of times when we work with people, uh, they're, they're looking at either other implementations or, or trying to do something on their own. And I think they really underestimate the complexity of, of what they're trying to do, building all this. We, we have you know, a team of developers that have you know, put in man years here. Um, and so uh, just talk about these different services and we're gonna dive in and, and show you some actual code examples here. You know, from a connectivity standpoint, we've, we've put lots of resources up on our website, but for something like NBIoT, co-op is the right approach. Um, so from an energy standpoint, from an efficiency standpoint, from a scaling standpoint to the cloud, 
uh, if you don't use the right connectivity approach, your solution is going to be limited very quickly. Um, and uh, I, it's, it's interesting because there's a lot of resources on the internet, but people, because it's a legacy approach, still seem very focused on MQTT, but that's just not a viable approach here. Um, the other thing is, is, is FOTA. You know, of course, there's regulatory and legislative issues here that FOTA is coming up on everyone's landscape. And um, cellular is interesting in that it provides the bandwidth necessary to do that, which some of the other networks aren't able to do. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting is, is, is how easy can you make it to do photo? And of course, you also need to make your photo mechanism secure. Many times these solutions are audited. Uh, and so when you work with us, you get a known uh, security plan. The, 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 the security risk plan of your photo is, is known out of the box, which is kind of nice. Um, speaking of security, um, you know, lightweight end-to-end -end does some very interesting things. There's authentication. There's uh, uh, authorization, um, and then of course, encryption of all your data. And we're kind of been working on the cutting edge of some of the security things. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there's a thing called OSCOR, which is an encryption approach, encryption of standard that's very specific, a little bit like co-op for these LP1 solutions. Uh, and it does two things that's really interesting. It saves you energy, uh, which can extend the lifespan of your devices, but it also actually improves the security as well. Uh, so it's very interesting. And then finally, this, this fourth pillar here, um, which is the data. So having these standardized data modules, for example, an in industry like water, you have 56 standard data modules. You just pull in your, your blocks. You've got your application. All your services are defined. All your data is defined. Next step. Um, and so this, this literally uh, it just are all things that, that shorten the time to market. Uh, so here are some code examples, and I'll let Atom take it. Exactly. So IOR is already a uh, uh, full implementation that coming all along with uh, all those you know features, like the end features, including like bootstrapping and uh, and data reporting, but also you know like the FOTA and the security mechanisms, uh, and all you need to actually manage your device lifecycle easily, right? And complying to the standard, of course. So here, as you can see, it's very easy to port IOR to any, any platform, any operating system. So you're, you just have to, to rely on abstraction layers uh, that, to, that here, uh, for the case of STM32, are linked to the, uh, to the Xcube cellular, right? So you, you have the abstraction on the modem side, so you can go very easy to actually bind those abstraction layers to an existing Xcube cellular. But you can go otherwise, right? If you want, for example, to copy your, your exact modem implementation, in that case, you will implement the AT commands and the things that needs to be, to be done, right? And the stack, I mean, will be operating seamlessly. So whatever uh, your hardware platform is, the operating system here, so you just have a few uh, implementation routines to, uh, to overload. Um, and the next thing, as you can see, it's also here, it's the way you set up your application logic and you, you call the stack. Actually, it's literally 10 lines of code to get started. You don't need to have an, any understanding of lightweight M2M. You just declare the, 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 the data model you want to use, right? And typically, you step into a stack, and the stack just will respond to any uh, lightweight M2M server orders. So uh, there are some callback mechanisms so that you, you, you can know whether, whether a server triggers an operation. Um, it's, uh, it's coming with a build system, so it's very integrable, very easy to, to use in your development environment. So it works out of the box with the, without knowledge of the, of the specifications. And at least uh, that's the same approach with firmware updates, very high, high level APIs. Uh, so as you can imagine in, in Lightweight like Antwerp, there are two modes of pushing firmware updates, either pull or push, right? So we support the both, both things. Uh, and typically here, uh, we, uh, this is very interesting API, very easy to use. So you, you have callbacks whenever a software update is triggered from a on the lightweight M2M -M server. Uh, and typically this is completely aligned with the specification, of course, but also enforce the regulation that now are, are arising uh, in UK, in the US and in Asia. So typically uh, there's a question about that. So how we get started with this uh, uh, lightweight M2M -M Iowa uh, assets, right? So we've pre-integrated Iowa with STM32, right? So how do you reuse that? So, Demos are already available for uh, the, um, the, cell, the cell one and cell two boards that Solo4 was talking about. So the one leveraging a Quectel model, but the, the new one leveraging now um, a Murata model. 
Uh, so the demo works seamlessly directly. You just go on our website, you have the link there, you click, you get the binaries, you get the instructions, and typically you can get started. Uh, so you download the image into your, your STM32 board and you're ready to go. Then you go into our, our public lightweight end to end testing server, right? So that you check the operation of your board with um, a, a, a reference uh, lightweight end to end server. And you can do like manipulations, you know, on uh, trigger some resources. So everything will be uh, seamlessly recognized and you can just uh, be up and running. So, of course, our testing server is freely accessible publicly, but you can easily uh, switch to our Alaska production server in case you want to manage your fleets and get, get access to your data actually and do, and do applications, web applications. So to summarize, how to, to get started with, uh, with our implementation. So either you get uh, the full uh, binaries, right, on the website, right? So if it's not enough, you want to go a little bit beyond that and you, and you want, for example, to implement your own application logic and want to go further for your device use case, well, you can go get access to your Iowa evaluation source code that is accessible through GitHub. So Iowa eval SDK, is this, it, it's an evaluation. It's not uh, fully disclosed, right? You have 1.0 uh, capabilities. There are features that are disabled. So, but still it's, it's good for you to compile, to see how it's going, build your application logic and get started. If it's not enough, and you want to have the full featured Iowa SDK, including the 1.1, the, uh, the built-in IPS object, and, and typically the, the firmware update APIs. So please come back to us, uh, to, to our sales, to get a, to get a quotation for your, for your use cases, right? Uh, so the way we sell uh, the, the, the package here, we created a special offer for uh, STM32 um, ecosystem. So uh, request your package, it's available until uh, uh, mid-July. So this package includes uh, IOA for STM32 and the bundles get, an access, get you an access to full feature source code with the STM32 porting layers that includes Xcube cellular uh, samples, examples and pre-porting layer we've done. You get 25 hours of integration guidance and support, right? So that, we'll, so that we, our team can help you to actually you know, work together on a device and, 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 and a proof of concept. Uh, you have, of course, the API reference guide, sample codes, a full set of documentation that makes you uh, start it very easily and develop your product easily. And, uh, and of course, access to Lightweight end to end test, test server. And we also uh, provide a bundle of production license for, for one of our products queue. So there's a special offer a 10% discount if you order it by, by mid-July with this promo code. So to just take benefit of it, the promo is going to end mid-July once again. Um, so I hope uh, it was useful, useful to you. Uh, of course, if you wish to add Lightweight end to end support in your product solutions, we're more than happy to, to talk to you. And, uh, and please get started. There is a, a bunch of you know, free uh, assets available for you. And, and of course, if you want to go beyond, uh, we're happy to, to, to provide you with more support. Good. Um, yeah, likewise, thank you very much. And with that, we're gonna open it up, I guess, to the Q&A time. Uh, so if you have questions, um, please put them in the, uh, in the Q and A section. So the first question was, where can I download the binaries for evaluation? So I think we addressed that. The link will be in this. We'll send out an email to all the people who registered with the webinar and the link will be in the PDF. Um, but it's also, uh, 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 I, can, I can maybe type it in there. Uh, actually, it's already answered, sorry. Um, maybe we can type it into the chat to everybody. Um, the second question here, uh, for very constrained sensor nodes, conserving battery power is very important. The sensor node is in sleep mode and only wakes up every, say, 15 minutes to send data. How does lightweight end-to-end -end support power save mode offered as part of NDIoT? The query for lightweight end -to -end server would need to be queued. Well, that, that's a very good question. <laughs> Uh, of course, I mean when we when we when we work with uh, with you know with uh, EDMI and TrackSense, of course, uh, battery power concerns are a strategic and critical for them. So we, we there are many ways to solve that. 
uh, you know, um, you know, setting up accurately your uh, your your device lifetime, so the lightweight NPM lifetime, making sure as well that your co-op implementation, uh, I mean, uh, cares about retransmission acknowledgements. So there's a combination of several factors that makes you uh, really, you know, save data traffic. And the same way applies for the security, right? So typically, uh, resuming a secure context can, can literally kill your device uh, battery. So you need to have uh, at least mechanisms uh, like the connection ID that, that will, uh, you know, uh, especially uh, optimize drastically uh, the, the resuming of the, of the secure context. So we have everything of, of this implemented in our IOA stack. And of course, we will be happy to, to um, I mean, to work together in case you have a more, more, uh, more question about it. Yeah, and uh, I think also that uh, PSM also is on, on the network plane. Um, PSM is on the network plane and lightweight MTM addresses these things on, on the applicative level. I think the thing is that when you're connecting uh, up to your cloud servers, you wanna do that as efficiently as possible. Um, and make sure you're not reconnecting or losing anything in transmission. Um, but yeah, no, these are these are important issues. Uh, and and things and kind of the part of the reason why we we support our products because there's a lot of optimization that goes needs to be go into there to make sure it works as well. Um, sure. So there's a, there's not a single answer. There's a combination of factors that that I would be happy to. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, it's exactly. Maybe I can add some comment as well on this yeah, one. Yes, so, please. Yeah. So regarding the PSM, for sure, as you said, uh, Steve, uh, was XCube server is able to manage PSM of the modem, meaning that when there is no communication uh, over the cellular, then we are able to automatically configure the modem to push it to enter the PSM mode. So basically, for sure, it is uh, fully supported. And uh, from the network side, as you said, uh, you know, the lightweight machine, machine server, because the, the modem is in the PSM mode, so it does not listen anymore any downlink data from the cloud, right? So I assume that normally the lightweight machine to machine server should be able to uh, queue all the requests from the, uh, from the external world, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so, so, so modem, modem configuration, it can be triggered for lightweight M2M, uh, you know, resource exposure, of course, but um, I mean, uh, also they're, they're uh, in lightweight M2M 1.1. So 1.1 is very important because it has specific, you know, um, saving mechanisms to shorten, uh, uh, again, the traffic and, and, and the level of transmission. So typically here, uh, for example, we, we have like uh, data push, uh, at the initiative of, of the device rather than, than the, way, the way around. So typically here uh, that uh, those kind of mechanisms are, are expected by customers that especially want to, to control the way device uh, well, go to sleep and, 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 and send data to, to the lab and servers. So uh, there's a next question here. What levels of battery size and life can we expect from an application running on these platforms? So, um, I know, uh, depending on the market, so typical smart, uh, I mean, typical battery operated solutions are smart metering, and they're looking for well over 10, 10 years. Uh, and I think that's, if I understand correctly, that's on a couple of AA batteries or a AA battery. Yeah, um, that's not an easy. <laughs> that's not uh, but it, but it's, it's, it's really going to depend on the application, what you're doing. And then there's other factors like, you know, FOTA, how often do you send FOTA? Because FOTA is going to use more energy. Uh, so there's a lot of moving factors there. But uh, in general, um, in general, people want to push this to extreme, and that, that's why they're looking at things like co-op and Oscor, and those are so critical. But also optimization. So you need to do security, but you need to make sure that the security is right size to the application. And this is where the quality of the lightweight end -to -end implementation matters, right? So how much you can uh, tweak, control your retransmission, your acknowledgments the way the secure context is res resumed, the way the traffic is actually saved. So, and, and typically here uh, with bad implementations, you can literally kill uh, the, 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 the battery life. So there, this is where Iowa has a strong advance compared to Contage. Uh, there's also a question about latency on the networks. Uh, so that's, that's the problem, that's the rub there. Yeah which is, um, so you can expect latency on NB-IoT networks, for example, of I think tens of seconds in some cases. Uh, and especially if, for example, if a cell tower is under load. And so that's, that's the problem, which is you need a connectionless way to communicate with when you're building these solutions into the cloud. 
uh, you can't establish and hold a connection and wait for that, uh, wait for all those transactions to happen. You're just going to use too much energy. Um, and so in doing that in a way that's efficient and secure and optimized from the device up to the cloud, kind of like the proverb, there's only a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. That's that's really the challenge. And I think a lot of people underestimate at them. Yeah, so here within Iowa, actually, to, to, fit, to, to solve those challenges, we have decided to implement our own co-op implementation, right? So that we can have control on the way retransmissions, in the way uh, um, timeouts, in the way uh, optimization and our handle, especially for NVIOT networks. Uh, and, and once again, uh, the quality of the lighter time to implementation matters because here, this is typically the kind of issues that 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 uh, that we help a customer uh, with uh, in uh, in shortening their their product launch because they if they use a bad implementation they will face those issues and they will not be able to sustain their 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 their, their device on in BIOT network because of latencies. Great, and it looks like in the chat panel. Um... Uh, Atem put in the link to the to the downloads to the binaries, so you can get those and um, and before you get the presentations as well. Um, please, uh, if there's any more questions, uh, we're going to allow you an, a few more seconds to type out your questions. Uh, other than that, that's that's going to wrap up the webinar. Um, and of course, if you have any specific questions that you'd like to take offline, we're available to you. Um, it looks like we've covered most everything. All right. All right. So, Lotho, Akim, do you have anything else to add before we close this session? Yeah, I would like to, to take this opportunity to, to thank you, Hyatt Europe, uh, for offering us the opportunity to do a webinar together, to thank all the attendees. And again, to, to restate that at ST, we really value the partnership uh, with you guys and uh, look forward to build a nice story together. Great. Thank you, Akim. Also, we, we value con the uh, ST contribution here. So um, I really believe that uh, the combination of our value addition, so STN32 and Iowa, it is a great for the industry to, uh, to move Absolutely. forward to open standards. So uh, thank you again. It was uh, really a pleasure for, for us to, to have this session with you guys. Thank you for all the attendees, uh, the nice questions, and uh, I hope to hear you soon.